I have Thalitha Kumi to be followed by Ayesha Ogilvy. Good evening. Um, I just came to say thank you to the RGB and thank you to the uh, Tenant Association. Um, all of you know what's going on. You're not privy to anything that's been said tonight. Uh, I also want to thank the Goddard Law Project, uh, Larry Wood and uh, Stephanie Storks. Nobody is privy to what's going on. You know exactly what's going on. Um, I'm a firm believer that you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. You will absolutely reap what you sow. Life is spiritual. So what you put out and what you do to, up to others will absolutely come back to you tenfold. So you want to be very careful as we move on into 2019, 2020, 2025, because what you put out is going to come back to you. So I want to tip my hat to you, RGB. I want to tip my hat to the Goddard Law Project that has been fighting uh, on behalf of the people. It is unconscionable some of the things that I've seen in my own building through the years. Um, one of the supers himself was privy to a, actually coming in people's apartments and planting certain things. And I actually said to him, I'm leaving right now. I said, you're gonna reap what you sow. And he was just removed out of our building after doing all this. So I tip my hat to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have Aisha Ogilvy to be followed by Carl Peter Clapper. Hello. Hello. Um, so as you know, my name is Aisha Ogilvy. Um, I come here as a tenant. However, I am also the chair of Housing and Human Services for Community Board 12 of Manhattan, which is Washington Heights and Inwood. I appreciate everyone's participation in this hearing, and I hope that it is not for naught all of the testimony that people have come to share with you. I hear these stories on a regular basis and increasingly in recent years, my inbox on Facebook fills up with messages. I get text messages and phone calls. I'm a volunteer as a community board member and I give my time freely and my time is being spent more and more every day because more and more people are being targeted. More and more people are dealing with, until you know some of these beautiful rent laws that we're having implemented now, situations that really should not be the case. It is changing the core essence of our city. I don't really recognize where I live anymore because of how much people have been displaced from our community. And the numbers bear it out, and I'm sure that you guys are privy to what those reports say, but I'm gonna speak to some of what's specific to what's happening in our district. Um, rental overcrowding is 15%. What that number will not tell you is that in some cases, as many as 19 people are living in, a, in an apartment that may be two bedrooms, that people are living with people who are not their nuclear family members because they can't afford the rent unless they actually violate the rules and rent to someone else. Sometimes people who are putting their family members in danger because they, they, they can't afford the rents, but they have to rent out in order to have a place to live. We need a rent rollback. At the very minimum, we need a rent freeze. Thank you. Do the right thing. Thank you. I have Carl Peter Clapper to be followed by Jose Tavares, who will need the assistance of the translator. Thank you. Yes, uh, I come here as a resident uh, of Carolyn Court. Uh, our building actually has a name. Um, and I also come here as an economist. I have been a political economist from my youth. Um, studied uh, uh, Henry George's work in, when I was 10 years old. Uh, what I hear today are a bunch of economically false statements. We are in the Great Depression too. Neither party wants to acknowledge that fact because they'd have to admit that they didn't avoid it and that we're still in it. 
and people are homeless because that is the measure of whether you're in a Great Depression or not. Not whether you get some lousy job somewhere that pays a third of what you got before. The other area is this market rate. Well, there's no such thing as a market rate when you have a mortgage. The mortgage is increasing the bid on every single real estate contract five times, six times, ten times, depending upon what sort of mortgage it is, how much above that down payment. The banks are forcing real estate prices into the stratosphere. It is insane to have apartments that go for $10 million. We have them in this city. No market would support that. Nobody could support that. And the way the markets work is on the basis of the median. It's not on the basis of how much somebody is earning. You know, you might have somebody has earning $12 million or whatever. That is not the basis for any sort of housing price. The other thing that has to come Thank in here. You. Okay, no, just one more thing too, okay? Gap is not being followed. Generally accepted accounting principles require that you depreciate the value of a capital asset, such as an apartment building. Thank you. So there should be a depreciation of rent of 2.5%, considering a 40-year depreciation. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Jose Tavares, uh, he left. Thank you. Um, I have Jenny Tabales to be followed by Jeannie Dubno. Dubno. Jenny Tabales? Thank you. Sorry, I have a bad throat, so bear with me. No worries. Okay. Um, could you just bring the mic down a little bit? Thank sure. You. Okay. First of all, good, good evening to each one of you. Good evening. My name is Jenny Tabales. I live in Hamilton Heights. I'm asking for no increase, no rollback. I'm sorry, and rent wrote back because three four of my paycheck goes to rent. My apartment should have been rent established all this time, but it wasn't. And I moved in in February 2011. The landlord at that time was Vantage. He knew this apartment was rent stabilization, and he still rented to me at the higher market price. They broke the law twice. I find out the previous tenant also was, they rented to the higher market price. Then the landlord, the landlord doesn't care or anything as long people pay the price, whatever he requests. My lease kept increasing every year, 50 to $100. But in the fourth year, he increased it to $1,500. And he said, that's what it is if I want to live there. My landlord right now is Jahuda Mentlock, which hope I pronounced it, and the company is YM Management. I, because of this reason, I had to find out, that's how I find out my apartment was established, that then I had to get to a lawyer. I have five years with a, with a private lawyer trying to get this solved and solution. Now, the increases, I don't think it's fair because landlords have advantage increase for almost 25 years in certain, while we, now that we're, we're asking for something from them, they're crying because we're asking a little bit back from no increase and rollback and everything. And I think that it's not fair, like one of the landlords uh, talk about it, that they talk about that they want to feed their family they got, yes, they have one family, but they have a lot of tenants and a lot of building. We have one income coming in, and we have family to feed. Thank and you. it's not, I, please let me finish. And it's not fair, because first of all, I'm a widow. My husband served 25 years in the service, 13 years in the NYPD, and now 11. 
and I, and I and because I'm a young widow, I cannot qualify for nothing. And do not think that in the future I'll be getting, because they told me, hopefully when you turn 60, maybe you get something, but it's not guaranteed. So Thank I'm you. asking you, please, please, and Bronnie, because my child needs to go to college. Right now I'm paying rent all these years, and I still have a balance of $100,000 they claim that I own. Thank and you. I haven't missed anything. So please, no increase and rent roll back. Thank you. Thank you. I have Ginny Dub now to be followed by Nestor Medina. Yeah, hi, my name is Jeannie Dubnow, and I'm with Riverside Edgecombe Neighborhood Association. I've been here every year, I think. And every year, I ask you, do you know about the, the pr provision that if a landlord is not making a profit, they have the right for a hardship increase? You all know that because it's part of your rules. So these landlords who get up here and they tell us they're not making a profit, and then we all say, well, go for a hardship interest. Show your books. You crooks, that's what we used to say all the time. Show us your books, you crooks. Now, you know very well that the landlords are making profits because it comes out from your own, own in, in, uh, information. According to data published, by the City Rent Guidelines Board last week, the landlords were making profits on rent-stabilized tenants by $540 on average from each unit per month. That's your information. So you all know this. So why do you have to, is there any question that there should be no rent increases? How can they get here and they stand up and they cry? We know damn well, and you know damn well, that the landlords are making profits. We don't have to prove it to you. Now, in recent years, the homelessness in New York City has reached the highest levels that it had since the Great Depression in the 1930s. You all know that. We read this in the newspaper every day, every single day. Now, you have an awesome responsibility from the Rent Guidelines Board. If you refuse, if, if you insist on increasing rents, you personally will be causing more homelessness. And in fact, you have all the information about how the landlords are making Thank more you. profits. Now, landlords are now threatening us. They say the Bronx is burning. Remember how the Bronx was burning? They're getting up here and they're threatening that they're not going to fix our apartments anymore because, oh, the poor things can't afford it. Thank However, you. they're making profit. So please, please, zero percent rent increase, nothing, so that, because they already are making money more than they can hand over fist. Thank you. So. I, I just, uh, so my ne next speaker is Nestor Medina. I just want to remind you, we have over 30 more speakers, so that's why I'm trying to keep us on, on the time. Um, and after Mr. Medina, I have uh, Andrea Shapiro. Good evening, board members. Good evening, neighbors. My name is Nestor Medina. I actually live in Hell's Kitchen, but I work as a tenant advocate organizer in the Bronx. I have prepared a statement. I proudly stand here with my brothers and sisters behind me, and on behalf of tenants from across the city to echo and amplify their concerns, cries, anger, frustrations, as they call on you to do the right thing and vote at the very least on a rent freeze. As a tenant advocate, I see firsthand da the daily troubles and struggles that tenants face. It's no exaggeration when studies show that people are paying 40%, 50% of their income and higher on rent. Let's appreciate and connect with that for a moment. When incomes can keep up with the rate of rent increases, you create a recipe for the crisis we face today. And so people are put in a tough situation of having to choose between eating, paying for medication, or other vital necessities and paying their rents. The reality is that every dollar makes a difference when the, when, the, when the rents are too damn high. 
it is a tragedy that in a country as vastly affluent as this one, we find greed and profits supersede the anguish and dignity of working class people, the economically disadvantaged and sick and disabled. It is a tragedy that we have to be here today begging for relief when it's self-evident by the numerous studies and powerful voices here tonight, that's you folks, and across the city, right, uh, that tenants are suffering, right? This level of suffering should provoke those in position, that's you guys, to respond with compassion and wisdom on addressing that suffer with nothing less than relief. Thank we you. appeal to your hearts, your minds, and souls to do the right thing, bringing relief to us by voting on a rent freeze instead of an increase. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I have Andrew Shapiro to be followed by Chaplain Delita Dubose Lee. Hi, my name is Andrew Shapiro, and I'm the program manager at Metropolitan Council on Housing. And I'm here to address two of the talking points we've heard tonight. We have rent stabilization because we are in a housing emergency. The free market can't work because of our vacancy rate. The system guarantees a profit. Landlords have exploited the system to the point where they were getting returns on major capital improvements that were on average of 20%, according to New York State, according to DHCR's reckonings. But due to the great changes in the law, they are now predicted to get 6% back and will often get 1.5 times their initial investment. The MCIs now are done over 12 years and last for 30 years. That's one point times longer than what they've paid, what that's calculated for tenants. That means tenants are doubling and more what they are paying in MCIs for landlords. But they are here climbing poverty like toddlers because their greed is slightly limited. They, are set, they also talk a lot about screen drink which covers seniors and people with disabilities, which is key for New York City to help deal with rising rents. However, it's not magical. It only helps people who are already, already rent burdened. They are rent burdened because of your rent increases. All it does is freeze them at the rent burdens that they are already at. The, we also need to remember these apartments, because of your rent increases, will not be affordable for the future. Therefore, their children taking over can't afford it. Many seniors have older children living with them. The time between them, their scary application and their child's scary application, the apartment raises $300. The city is no longer affordable for their children or grandchildren. Landlords have spent millions of dollars in mailers, in TV ads, in lobbyists, and now they're sad that they're losing. Maybe they should have spent that money on repairing their buildings, and we wouldn't have the same, con the same conversation we're having here every time. Thank you. Thank you. I have Chaplain Delita Dubose Lee to be followed by Janet Harmon. Yes. First, I want to take the time. First, I want to take the time to thank you all for giving me an opportunity to hear my testimony. I came here because a young man that I met, I've been knowing him for some time now, and he invited me just one day. So it was definitely meant for me to see him. I saw him on the bus yesterday. He's sitting right there, and I want to thank God for him today. So I have an opportunity, and I'm going to be quick. I really believe that the rent stabilization is a necessity for low and middle income tenants. Salaries have not been increased to meet these demands. An increase would bring hardship to my community and myself. It's really hard to maintain a quality of life when you're trying to pay these high rents. This would definitely be a burden. I mean, a real burden. But there is another concern that I have. There's a tenant in my building. He's about 70 plus years old. And I don't know his ethnicity, but it's not important. He, I believe, is either Jewish or Italian or whatever. But I know that he's a, 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 he's a man. He's a human. And he's suffering right now because he applied for SCREE. And he was denied because of his income. They said it was too high. But he was told that being that 
his income is too high, he can't get it, and now they're trying to make him move out of the building because they're saying that his, his apartment is not rent stabilized. But it is. I live in this building. I lived in that building for 37 years. I've seen tenants come and go, and I've been wondering why they leaving so fast. Because the rent is high. But I'm truly blessed by the Lord that I've been there that long, and I thank God for having a voice today to speak up for the people. More power to the people, and maybe the Lord bless you all to do the right thing. Amen? Thank God you. bless you all. Thank you so much. Praise the God. I have Janet Harmon to be followed by Phoenicia Herbert. Hey, my name is Janet uh, Harmon. I live in Washington Heights. And I love this city. I love this city so much because it is so diverse. It's the most wonderful thing about this city is that diversity. And diversity also includes a great diversity of incomes. And we must keep this city affordable for all for it to be a great city. And I see gentrification creeping everywhere, raising the rents everywhere. And, um, you know, it's changing the culture of our city, not for the better. And I just really. There have been many, many high raises by the Rent Guidelines Board through the years, especially through the Bloomberg era. And just help keep this city great, give us a rent rollback this year. And let's all work together really hard, just keep this great place diverse and affordable. Thank you. I have Phoenicia Herbert to be followed by George Magiros. Good evening, panel. Good evening, room. So I was going to talk a little bit about my apartment and my bed, um, my uh, building. Um, but I wanted to have a little bit of conversation about the owners, because I know you've noticed what they've said. They have stated that they've had to, the young woman here said she had to um, purchase lower the cheapest um, the cheapest items for her building but when we get cheap items we get cheap quality and cheap quality does not last long my building has had a major improvement we've received the IEIs the MCIs and we about five years ago and we're still repairing from those renovations there should not be renovations after a major capital improvement. So when I hear uh, owners saying, we're gonna get the cheapest, that won't last. You're gonna wind up spending more money. And um, the un other owner says, peace and love. Peace and love doesn't pay my bills when my one bedroom apartment is $1,800. So, yes. So, and I'm, I'm not in Manhattan, I'm actually in the Bronx, but we have, after these uh, renovations, we have one apartment in the building that water shoots up out of the toilet. It does not go down, flooding the apartments below. You have another one who has to stuff socks in her windows so that they won't get air into the apartment. So these major improvements were not done well. I had to stay with someone and pay half their rent because they gave us less than two weeks to prepare for no kitchen and no uh, bathroom. Thank you. I have George Magiros to be followed by Alexandra Provo. Okay. Uh, thank you, board. Um, I am a hotel tenant. My name is George Majerus. I live in Hotel Park Lincoln on the Upper West Side. Um, I want to say that the rent, I mean, when you froze the rent for a hotel, it literally saved my life. Um, in 2009, I lost my job. I was unemployed. Then I went on extended unemployment. Um, I finally found work. And just last year, during the summer, I was um, 
I got sick, and just when I thought everything, I was standing on my feet again, I lost my job again. And so I've been unemployed for eight months. I, I recently just found a job three weeks ago. Last week, I had just $300 in the bank. I haven't told anyone that. <laughs> so um, uh, I just want to say, um, yes, so um, thank you for doing that. Um, well, I guess there's another thing I saw all the time. <laughs> in the New York Times, there's an article today about um, starter homes, how their investors are buying starter homes. I uh, these are not investors. If you're buying something that's new, you're buying new homes, you're buying new equipment, that's investing. If you're buying something that's old, you're buying old land, you're buying old buildings, that is not investing. We should not be subsidizing rapacious landlords, um, absentee landlords. Uh, your name is rent stabilization. We should be stabilizing the rent. It's not a means-tested benefit. Um, thank you very much. No, th thank you. I have Alexandra Provo to be followed by Phil Marius. Hi. Um, thank you so much for your time and the opportunity to speak. My name is Alex. Uh, I am a librarian and a rent-stabilized tenant. I live uptown, where I also volunteer at a, a women's homeless shelter. Young women and seniors, a whole range of women come through from all stages of life. There are artists, people with master's degrees, retirees, retail workers. I see them once a month when I sleep over at the shelter, but they are without homes every day. We are in a housing crisis. Housing is truly foundational. You heard about this earlier tonight from a speaker who is former, formerly homeless. How are the women who come to the shelter supposed to um, build anything, find jobs, keep doing the jobs they already have? How can they do anything without that foundation? They are stuck in purgatory for months and months at a time getting on a bus to arrive at our respite site shelter at 8 p.m. and leave again the next morning at 6 a.m. My heart breaks because this could happen to anyone, but especially those who will be most impacted by the decision you are tasked with as a board. Housing should not be about profit. We need a rent freeze because housing and homelessness are inextricable. My small monthly act of volunteering is a band-aid. You, on the other hand, can help people across the entire city stay in their homes. Please freeze the rent. Thank you. I have Phil Marius to be followed by Diane Shapiro. Good evening, I'm Phil Marius. I'm the community liaison in Assembly Member Richard Gottfried's office. He regrets that he's not able to be here tonight. He's stuck in Albany as the legislative session comes to an end. Uh, the assembly member represents the 75th Assembly District that includes Chelsea, Hell's Kitchen, Clinton, Midtown, and part of the Upper West Side and Murray Hills. And many of his constituents are tenants, many with social security as their sole income. And it is these constituents um, and others struggling to keep their apartments or who are already homeless that he wishes to submit this following testimony in support of a rent freeze. Um, several years ago, uh, the Guidelines Board got well-earned praise for its historic vote to freeze one-year lease renewal increases for two, 2015 and 2016. It is unfortunate, however, that this year it has proposed to increase rents. And we believe that any increase would continue the long-standing policy of excessively favoring landlords while ad adding to the burden that long-time and low-income tenants are facing. Affordable housing in the U.S. means that residents pay no more than 30% of their income in rent. Meanwhile, the average rent-stabilized tenant is currently paying 36% of income for rent, and 32.4% of rental households pay over 50% of their income in rent. And these facts can also be found in the report of the Rent Guidelines Board, the Income and Affordability Study. And given these numbers, even with a rent freeze, 
rent regulated tenants will continue to struggle to make rent and fend off eviction. And another point that he, he would like to point out is that um, even in the income and expense study of the rent guidelines board, um, landlords have um, earned an operating income of $3,012. $176 as of 2018. So it, it is for these reasons and other reasons you have heard and will continue to hear that the assembly member encourages that the rent guidelines board votes for a rent freeze. Thank you. Thank you. I have Diane Shapiro to be followed by Sarah McDaniel Dyer. Diane Shapiro. I have uh, Sarah McDaniel Dyer to be followed by Sheila Zukowski. Ms. McDaniel Dyer. Hello. Um, so I'm here because the reason that I can still afford to live in my neighborhood is because I've lived there for 12 years as a rent stabilized tenant. If I were looking for a new apartment in my neighborhood right now, I couldn't afford it. I live in Inwood. Um, for most of my adult life, I've had three jobs to make ends meet. I have an advanced degree. I have a master's degree, and I still have three jobs most of the time. When I was a kid, my family owned a small building in Queens, but we still worked because owning a building isn't a job. I pay over 20000 a year in rent. And that's just my apartment. My landlord owns 33 buildings just in Washington Heights. He doesn't need more money. Last year, he raised our rent twice for two MCIs for our roof and a boiler. My roof now leaks, and we haven't had consistent heat or hot water since he put that boiler in, so what am I paying more money for? What are the old people in my building paying more money for? Every friend I have who's had a child has left this city within two years, mostly because of the cost of housing. We have to decide if this is a city for families and working class people, or if this is a city for finance bros and rent laws. I suggest that if the landlords here that are claiming financial hardship, if you don't raise the rent, do what every other New Yorker does when they need money, get another job. Thank you. I have Sheila Zukowski to be followed by Lisa Reist. Okay, the first thing I'd like to do um, is thank everybody here in the audience, uh, the, the tenant advocates who have done an amazing job in finally moving the rent laws in the right direction, uh, in the direction of tenants. <laughs> Hasn't been easy fighting against multi-million, billion dollar real estate in industry people, but you did it, and it's just the beginning, I hope. Uh, I personally am one of those dinosaurs known as rent control tenants. Even though rent control tenants are pictured in, in the popular imagination as having eight room, three bath apartments and paying $198, nothing could be farther from the truth. To be rent controlled, you have to have lived in your apartment since 1971. That's more than 48 years ago. And the law that governs rent control allowed, past tense, landlords to raise rents seven and a half percent every single year. Seven and a half percent increases over 48 years. Can you imagine what happened to my rent? I spent a lot of time figuring it out and I hope it's correct, but I calculated it's an increase of 1,250 percent. Uh, so I'm very glad that the new rent, rent laws um, have arrived and uh, the increases will be more in line from now on with RGB increases for the rent for rent stabilized tenants. Um, but I already pay at least half my income in rent and I have a lot of trouble paying my bills. Um, so 
This means that this panel, um, this panel is very important to me. I need some relief over after 48 years of monster increases. Thank you. I have Lisa Reese to be followed by Maria Pena. Yeah. Lisa? Lisa Reist, and I'm here with Nimick. Uh, I live in a stabilized apartment at 92 Pinehurst Avenue in Washington Heights, and my landlord is High Castle Realty, owned by Newcastle Realty, who you might have seen in the New York Times recently. They're being investigated for scam renovations uh, by the AG. I have lived there since 2012 and have been in Washington Heights for 12 years. We cannot survive further rent increases. In 2016, my building was sold and our life changed. At our new next lease renewal, like everyone else in my building, our new landlord yanked our preferential rent, uh, thus giving us a $550 a month increase in a uh, zero like rent freeze year. Uh, due to recent extreme increases in Northern Manhattan uh, due to Inwood's rezoning, we couldn't find anywhere to move suddenly, so we stayed. My, uh, we have limited options as my husband, who works full time and as a freelancer, uh, now supports us as I became disabled um, by chronic illness six years ago. And I do not get SSDI payments uh, because those are only awarded to 37% of initial applicants and I could not afford an attorney. Rent now takes up 80% um, of our income. And combined with student loan debt, we barely scrape by. Our building, once pristine, is now full of constant construction as apartments are gutted, extensively renovated, and deregulated. Building entrances, once secure, are now propped open daily for workers, leading to mail theft and a haze of flies in our lobby. Ever-present workers who are not given safe masks or safety equipment trail lead dust and construction debris through our elevator and halls, the floors of which are now caked with grime as they are rarely cleaned. Thank you. Throughout November, definitely, deafeningly loud industrial machines were used for asbestos removal on our roof. The vibrations damaged our apartment two floors down, leaving deep and bulging cracks across our ceilings and walls and possible structural damage. Thank you. Water damage followed, which was not repaired until eight months later, after rotting ceiling plaster fell on our bed and they were issued a housing violation. Thank our you. landlord now uses off-site thermostats controlled at their offices to keep our apartments unheated and our water freezing despite frequent housing violations. They do not respond to letters, emails, or calls. I know that we are not alone, and I have heard horror stories and much worse from my neighbors in my building and my neighborhood. We love our home and we're fighting for it, but we need rent reductions, not increases. Thank you. Yeah! I have Maria Pena to be followed by Emmanuel uh, An Antigua. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Quiero dar las gracias al panel de RGB por estar aquí esta noche escuchando los testimonios que nosotros la gente de bajos ingresos tenemos. Good evening to all of you. I'd like to thank the RGB panel tonight for listening to all of us, including uh, the people and their testimony, especially those who are low income. Estoy aquí representando a NMI C del Washington High y quiero hablar acerca de las reparaciones y del dinero que los Landor agarran en nombre de reparar nuestros edificios. I am here today on behalf of NMEC from Washington Heights and I'd like to speak about the repairs and of course the money that landlords uh, swindle from people in name of all of the repairs that they're supposedly doing in the buildings. Ellos siempre reciben dinero para supuestamente reparar nuestros apartamentos 
y hacer las reparaciones en las áreas públicas, pero yo no las veo. They apparently receive money so that uh, all types of repairs can be carried out in public sp uh, spaces uh, in our buildings, but I never get to see any of these repairs done. Acerca de las averías de los edificios y los defectos que tienen nuestros vecindarios, mis vecinos y yo no hemos visto, no hemos conseguido ninguna de las reparaciones que ellos reportan. El año pasado, los Landor de mi edificio consiguieron 10.8% y yo estoy pendiente de lo que ellos reportan a la ciudad. Ellos mienten. According to, uh, according to what they've stated, uh, the damage and defects that uh, have been repaired Uh, have, been, uh, have not been seen by any of us, including uh, my neighbors. Last year, they reported a 10.8% uh, increase in uh, all of the repairs that were done, and of course, we never saw any of these done. Pero ellos nunca invierten el dinero que la ciudad le da supuestamente para reparar los edificios y nuestros apartamentos. But they don't ever invest any of the money that the city supposedly gives them so that these repairs can be carried out in our buildings. Yo tuve que dementir el año pasado a mi administrador management porque él reportó que él reparó mi, mi apartamento completo. Yo llamé a la ciudad y dije que no era cierto y que necesitaba que HPD fuera a impresionar mi apartamento. Last year I called out the building manager uh, for my building because he stated to the city that he had fully repaired my apartment, which was not done. So of course I called HPD and reported this to the city. Y gracias a Dios, Llegaron los inspectores y comprobaron que la que decía la verdad era yo. Muchas gracias. gracias. And thank God that the, uh, of course, the supervisors uh, showed up at my apartment and they witnessed for a fact that these repairs had not been carried out. And they realized that I was not the one that was lying. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I have Emmanuel Antigua, but um, we're going to take a 10 minute break um, and then we'll come back. Just so you have a sense of, of where we're at, we have um, uh, uh, almost 20 more speakers, and the first speaker after the break will be Liz Powers. Vamos a tomar una pausa de 10 minutos, pero para que por favor tengan una idea, todavía nos quedan casi unos 20 discursantes por presentarse. Okay. Yeah, ju just, to, just to be clear, the, uh, Mark, who is the stenographer, has been typing away for three hours, and his fingers just need a break. So. Para que, eh, por favor, sepan, el taquígrafo lleva más de tres horas Four. tomando todos los apuntes, así que es justo que él tome una pausa. Gracias. Uh, Emmanuel Antigua, uh, will we'll speak before we take this break. Emmanuel? Yes. Welcome. Hi. Um, my name is Emmanuel, and I work as part of an administrative team in a research department at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Um, I am a rent stabilized tenant in Inwood in a building owned by Barberry Rose Management. Barberry Rose purchased my building in 2016 and has paid millions more buying building after building in my neighborhood. In the past eight months, my rent was increased over $100 for a boiler that did not keep me and my neighbors warm this winter and a roof that leaks. As, ten as a tenants' rights activist, I have heard many similar testimonies from my fellow tenants, many even more unjust and more heartbreaking. These landlords are clearly not hurting. They are doing everything they can to turn maximum pro profits using strategies based on pure greed. So I beg and plead with you to either establish a rent rollback or at most a rent freeze, please. Thank you. All right, we'll recess for 10 minutes and we will return about 9.13. Thank you. Um, sorry for the delay in reconvening. Um, uh, I think we're ready to go. Um, so I have Liz Peters, who's here on behalf of Council Member Keith Powers. And then um, Ms. Peters will be followed by Thomasine Holloway. 
Thank you. As you mentioned, I will be reading testimony from Councilmember Keith Powers, the council member for the 4th District of Manhattan. As City Council Member for the 4th District of Manhattan, I represent tens of thousands of rent-stabilized tenants. The district I represent begins at Stuyvesant Town in Peter Cooper Village on 14th Street near the East River, extends as far west as Columbus Circle, and as far north as 98th Street and 5th Avenue. The neighborhoods I serve contain vastly different populations, but they all have a great need for more affordable housing. I'm respectfully requesting the Rent Guidelines Board vote for a 0% increase on one- and two-year leases. As everyone in this room doubtlessly knows, the state legislator, legislature achieved a historic milestone in its passage of new legal protections for rent-stabilized tenants. Albany has done its job for the first time in decades, but it will be all for naught if the Rent Guidelines Board does not follow suit to protect tenants. Though housing law has taken bold steps toward further protecting rent stabilization, tenants are still paying ever-escalating rents while landlords continue to reap profits. Recommending a two and a quarter percent increase as indicated in the board's preliminary vote for one year leases could undo much of the good work completed this year to strengthen affordability in New York. Your recent report notes that there was a net gain of 40, over 4,300 units citywide. While this is indisputable, it does not quite lay out the full picture for what has happened to rent stabilized units in Manhattan. Unlike the rest of the boroughs, Manhattan suffered a net loss of hundreds of rent stabilized units last year. In fact, the majority of all the units lost to regulation last year throughout the entire city were in Manhattan. Additionally, the average rent is a staggering $4,500 a month. It is critical that the board takes the scarcity and distribu distribution of rent stabilization units into account when considering raising rents even further. In spite of yet another year of increase in profit from rent stabilized tenants, landlords still requested 5.25% for one year lease and 6.25% for a two year lease renewal. In my home neighborhood of Stuyvesant Town and Peter Cooper Village, we know firsthand about the importance of rent stabilization. Our community would not be possible without the regula regulation and protection of rents. Any rent increase recommended by the Rent Guidelines Board would be compounded by long-term payments added on to rent for major capital improvements. Thank you. Thank you. I would, and one last thing, I'd be remiss without mentioning the individuals and families who are most impacted by housing policy in the last decade. Our city's homeless population has nearly doubled. Uh, the city is in the city is placing numerous resources into combating forces that are accelerating homelessness, and I implore you not to add to those causes. Thank you. Thank you. I have Thomasine Holloway to be followed by Felicia Majet. Thomasine Holloway. Come on up. I have Felicia Majet to be followed by Mary Majet. Hello. Hello. Happy to be in front of you. Um, I live at 601 West 151. Woodcrest is the management. I had a fire in March of 2016, and I was out of my house for eight months. I came home to a beautiful painting, but it wasn't done. I stayed at the house because I didn't have anywhere to go. The walls was falling apart. The floors was opening up. There were they put the electricity on the outside of the wall instead of inside the wall. Um, we had roaches, rats, all kinds of things coming out, and he did nothing. I took him to court. He said he wasn't going to fix the apartment. He was trying to really get me, force me out. But how could you force people out when they have nowhere to go? I had to stay in that. My daughter, my fiance, we all asthmatics. Now our lungs is messed up. My blood pressure is like 200 over 180 because I cannot get my apartment together. My diabetes is all the chain. I can't control it. I can't do anything. And I think it's unfair. I pay my rent every month. I was never late. I'm a good tenant. I don't bring drama to the building. I, for the life of me, I could not understand why this man did not want to give me a proper apartment. I think it's unfair that landlords can do whatever they want. You take them to court, all you do is get adjourned and adjourn, and in the meantime, your family is living in unhealthy departments. And then after all of this is over, he still want me to pay him for the whole time that the apartment's been inhabitable. So for three years, I've been paying this man my rent, and I haven't been able to live in a habitable apartment. And I really wish that y'all would do something about these landlords because they're getting away with murder. And I appreciate you hearing what I have to say. Please don't raise the rent. I really can't afford it. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Majette to be followed by Budia Munez. Good evening. My Good name evening. is Mary Majette. I'm here on behalf of young, the younger generation. I have a question. If a murderer, a child abuser, a sex offender go to jail for committing crimes, why is it that these landlords get away with all this heinous crime that goes on? I worked, I worked at an SRO for 16 months. Yeah. And in 16 months, 10 people died. You know why they died? Because the landlord, the only volunteers of America, told the tenants, give it your air conditions. We put a vent up here so you guys can have air conditioning. So you don't have to have it. Don't you know, eight people died due to heat stroke alone. One tenant died, he was butchered. Somebody came in his apartment and butchered him. And guess what, we have 24 hour surveillance on staff. But guess what, we have no locks. And we overwork. So who's protecting us in SRO? That's where I work at. Then you heard my mother's story, I came home to this. She didn't tell you that I can look from one room to the next through a crack in my wall. That's not cool. My neighbor fell out her window because she leaned on it and it was not secure, and she died. For what? Because she paid her rent? This is how you repay us? My family has been in my apartment since 1949. I lived in my apartment. My great, great aunt lived there. When we moved into our apartment, you know what they told us? Well, good for you, but you're gonna pay market value rent. My mother, we've been living here since 1994. Never had a rent problem, but yet you gonna fix my apartment? You didn't even have the common courtesy to come to me and say, I'm sorry for what you've been through. You looked at me like I wasn't worth nothing to you. After all the years I've paid my rent, been a good tenant to you, this is what we get. Now I know y'all have y'all plates and y'all go through the things y'all go through, but y'all would not want to live where we live at. Y'all would not want to endure where we endure. And I think that it's only fair that y'all get a taste, landlords included, to see where we live at, to see what we go through. But now gentrification has came into our neighborhood and all these condos come in, y'all want to kick us out. But where was y'all at when job bars was going on, when babies was getting killed, when I had to sacrifice from going to an elite college to go to a community college, because I couldn't afford it. It's either my rent, my health care, or college. Who do I pick? I thank you guys, I appreciate it, and I hope that you hear us. Have a great night. Thank you. Virginia Munez to be followed by Regina McCray. Ms. Munez? Ms. Munez? I have Regina McCray to be followed by Alice Sutter. Okay, so I'll speak very, very quickly. Um, I live in Washington Heights, and um, when we got um, our lease, we had never heard of rent stabilization, rent control. Um, we didn't know anything about the rent guidelines, and we were just happy to get a two-bedroom apartment in Washington Heights for 800 and change a month. Fast forward 15 years later, and I'm working alongside Mimic, um, who has decided to um, help us with our case, which is what I'll get to next, and they suggest that we look at our rent history. And I find out that we've been overpaying for the last 15 years. My landlord owes me about $90,000 plus interest because the previous tenant had lived there 40 years. He was entitled to a $100, $103 rent increase. And so my rent should have been 471 instead of 896. And with the new law, we can only sue back the last six years. So while they can look back 15 years and see what the rent should be, because it should be 671 instead of 1300, that is that now. Um, but I'll never be able to get that other 60,000 I've been cheated out of. So I don't think my landlord is entitled to a rent increase. Um, Kushner and his family owned the building. Um, they were doing uh, work without work permits. They would move kitchens into hallways and turn one bedroom apartments into three bedroom apartments and then charge two or three thousand dollars a month rent. They have kicked everybody out and there's only 11 rent stabilized tenants left in a rent stabilized building. So when Shamco came in, I'm gonna make this very quick, they decided 
they were going to pay $11 million for a building that was valued at $2 million. So they decided they would pick up where the other landlords had left off and destroy our apartments. Um, she was just talking about being sick. As you can see, I'm wearing a heart monitor. I've had leads in my head from a seizure. Thompson. Alvin Alexis? I have Chriselle Thompson. Chriselle. Oh. Chriselle Thompson to be followed by Nadira Ahmed. Good evening. I know it's a long evening, but I'll try and be short. I am a resident of the, the formerly uh, Riverside Park Towers. It's now BSREP 3333 Broadway, LLC. Um, after the building came out of the Michelana program, um, which everyone was on um, the 30% of their income, I fell into a, what's considered a lap lease, landlord assistance program. So um, it's not officially subsidized apartment, but it, my rent is increased based on the decisions that you make. Um, I've lived in the community for 37 years, raised three children, and was uh, part of the fabric of that community when it was desolate, when it was drug written. I stayed, I was a working class mom. I've worked ever since I was able to get uh, working papers into maybe three years ago, 29 of those years with the federal government when I was forced to retire disability due to injuries and a medical condition which causes me pain, um, chronic pain. My pension has been reduced by 60%. I do not qualify. Uh, with the requirements for SSDI. Even if I did, I could not double dip with my pension and SSDI. After working for the federal government for so long, I was now receiving 60% of my rent, I mean of my pension, which entitles me to pay 80% of that to my rent, my landlord. It is an extreme hardship and although I know you've heard various stories and my is not unique, I do hope that you will consider in your hearts that this is a trend in this city. Um, Thank you. People do not qualify for this program, Street, Dre, SSDI, um, and it is a shame that I have to tell my kids that I may have to move in with them because of one who has worked almost her entire life cannot pay her rent on her pension that she's paid into. Thank you. Thank you. We have Nadira Ahmed to be followed by Richard Berger. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm here you know, to talk with you briefly for why I opposed the uh, rent increase. My name is Nadira Ahmed, and I'm a member of WEACT, 
for environmental justice and I'm a member of the Tennis Association at 2186 Fifth Avenue, Lennox Terrace for 27 years. Now some of the points, at my length of um, 27 years, they haven't made <laughs> any, uh, you know, improvements. And this year alone, I had the first, I had, my, I, I had to fight cancer and needed to get um, sanitation, uh, a sanit I have sanitation, but a, sani a, san a, a sanitarized refrigerator and stove. Um, my refrigerator and stoves have been left broken. First of all, I've never received a new refrigerator. When I moved in 27 years ago, I got a refurbish and I was fighting for a new refrigerator, but they never gave it to me. They, they keep giving me refurbished refrigerators. And one of the main things that's important when you have cancer, you don't need a used refurbished refrigerator from another person's illness. You know, what they do is that when you die, they take in refurbish the refrigerator and bring it into a new um, um, tenant's apartment. And bleach can only do but so much, you know, and because we're dealing with bacteria and every part of cancer, everybody just have different kind of cancer and have to take different kind of medicine. And they know that. And they know that my refrigerator is broke. I have an old stove, it's broke, um, broken towel that I, you know, that I can cut my feet on. I told them I have, um, went to insurance, I said, if I cut my feet, I'm going to sue you, you know. And so my point is that when I uh, made uh, a request for new equipment, I was denied, which left me to manage myself. I asked them, could I go to Home Depot and buy my own towel? They, they could send someone in. I said, no. Um, I asked for a new refrigerator, can we buy it ourselves? They said no, but my apartment is, is old, 27 years, it's dilapidated with uh, all, you know, it's dilapidated. Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. There should be a freeze until these, you know, these um, demands are made or y'all should give us a four year lease instead of a two to one to zero on the street. Thank you. Okay. I have Richard Berger and then Tavo Alarone. Okay. Uh, my name is Richard. As a long-term rent-stabilized tenant, I just wanted to thank you all for your pre preliminary vote uh, on rent freeze. And um, I also, I, I mean, right now I'm on a fixed income. I pay over 60% of my income, monthly income, on rent. So I really appreciate your vote next week uh, on the rent freeze. Uh, I, I also believe that there should be a rent rollback. I wanted to bring everybody's attention to the fact that in 2008, uh, no, 2009, 2010, uh, the rent board at that time decided that the rent increases weren't high enough. So apartment renewals for that year got hit with a 40, I think it was 40, dollar surcharge on a one-year lease and eighty dollars on a two-year lease okay that money that we paid in is still we're still paying it today and the increases on top it, it's like paying an extra 150 180 dollars a month so that should be considered uh, when you're uh, voting you know for the uh, rent freeze but it also is adds some weight to voting for a rent rollback. So that that's you know, and I hope you know I appreciate your uh, listening to everybody here. I mean, there's been some really incredible stories, and uh, you know, it's a shame. But um, you know, I hope also that you can um, enforce the laws that we have just. Gotten over the last month, you know, for the uh, you know the new rent laws, and it, it, I just want to say that they're worth nothing if they're not enforced. Thank you. Thank you. I have Taigo Olorude to be followed by Elizabeth Felicia. Right. Um, I thank you very much. Uh, uh, okay. Talk to the board. Uh, I thank the uh, the board panel for allowing me to speak here today, and thank you for your efforts. Um, my name is Tano Olorode. 
uh, I live in the Lower East Side of uh, Manhattan and in the same apartment for nearly 18 years. Uh, it's in the same apartment where my two children were born and uh, uh, the cohabitate the co with my, uh, my wife and my two children. My apartment was sold, uh, the building was sold about uh, uh, three years ago. And uh, the new landlord subsequently uh, started attacking my family, uh, tried to offer us money to move, we rejected it, and subsequently resorted to all types of harassment, uh, including opening our mails, um, uh, um, tampering with, uh, uh, we didn't have um, gas, cooking gas for some time, uh, prolonging uh, construction work for a long time, and um, rejecting rent checks that I've written to them. In essence, questioning my, the, 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 the legality of my marriage with my wife or asking me to go and produ produce marriage certificate when the landlord already knew that uh, we were a family unit and that in the previous, uh, previously expired leases. Now, this is, this is not the America that I know. Um, there's a lot that can be said about the society in how we treat the vulnerables. Um, culturally, I'm supposed to be responsible for my children. I have done everything that I'm supposed to do as as with me as a father. Um, my children are only world students, great athletes, but. Uh, um, my landlord did not see us as a family. He wanted our opponent at no cost. Thank you. I went to the DHR to help for help after about a year dealing with this on my own. Despite winning two orders from the DHR, another order from the health department because the landlord kept bombarding my children with lead dust. Thank you. He was supposed to was ordered when they did to clean the lead dust up. It did not clean up when it was supposed to. Till today, it's still filing all forms of uh, elongated um, uh, proceedings. I have tons and tons mm -hmm. of paper like this in my apartment. I apologize, but I've had to deal with this. I'm not holding rent. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. So um, I have a unique view of things because I also have real estate license. Thank because you. I know that a lot of people uh, it's changing the makeup. You are one of those safeguards that the American society puts in place. You understand me? To help uh, make sure, you understand me, that uh, there's all kinds of creed, colors, uh, Thank you. Uh, people of different uh, income levels. Mr. Ramadan, can you wrap it up? I, 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 I thank you very much. Thank you. Um, my, the New York that I know, this is not the New York that I know. This is a welcoming society. This is a beautiful place. Let's keep New York beautiful. Thank you. Um, um, so, keep the rent, the rent is, or uh, uh, smash it. Thank you. I am uh, Elizabeth Felicia and then uh, Adriana Barrett. Hi, uh, my name is Elizabeth Felicella, and I've been around stabilized tenant at uh, Amsterdam Avenue and 109th Street for 27 years. I'm here on behalf of my tenant association. Um, there are, it's two buildings, there are 59 apartments in total. 11 of those apartments have been held empty, some of them for years, seven, eight years in preparation for an eventual sale. The building did finally sell in November. Work was started on two or three of those apartments. It all stopped when it became clear that the rent reforms were going to go through in Albany. Um, our uh, landlord, he doesn't know us. He doesn't know the building. In some ways, he's not a landlord. He is a speculator. That aside, my question or my point is that if landlords can afford to hold apartments empty, it should be affordable units that people are living in. How can it even be a question that they might deserve 
a rent increase because these apartments, you know, sit empty for years. And so we're asking uh, for a zero increase to make it very clear that housing is not a monopoly game, that it's a human right, and that, um, thank you very much. Thank you. We have Adriana Barrett to be followed by Nadia Ramirez. Adriana? Um, hi, my name is Adriana, and I'm 12, and I personally also live in housing, but um, actually this increase, if it happens, will not affect me, though. But even though it does not affect me, it would just see each of these people here having to fight for the for you know not having this increase in rent it's kind of it hurts my heart to see that people are living in horrible conditions and having increases in rent that honestly some of the like ha like places that I've heard people describe is like I don't believe humans should be able to like, not able, but like, shouldn't live in these conditions. Thank you. And now you are nervous to be followed by Betty Jones. Good morning, I want to say um, thank you for guys giving us the opportunity to speak to you. And I want to say kudos to you guys because you guys have been here for so long and all these stories are so sad and it could be so exhausting telling it, but also hearing it and feeling responsible for these people that are speaking. Um, I want to say this is my first time that I've come to one of these meetings, and I just got involved. I've been in New York all my life. I was born and raised in Washington, and I'm a very, very extreme part of because people are me and they know that. And um, because of Munich, um, this organization, they have allowed us to, or uh, allowed me and Lisa Tennyson and Ruben to understand our rights and the things that we should be accustomed to. And we really didn't understand that. Maybe because of language barrier, maybe because we're older, they didn't understand that. We realized that the living conditions that we're in are not proper, not standard. It's really sad, and especially now that we've got new landlords and we're pushing people out. It's really um, devastating to see how people are just trying to take advantage. But that's not the point that I really want to speak because all the stories you've heard. But I am kind of, I want to mention is that I learned that rent stabilized apartments are here to stay. So regardless of what happens, the law has stated that these have to stay. The, 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 the game, the rules of the game have changed. And I also think that the rules of this scenario has also, should also be changed. And the way I see it, and I want to present that, is that it should be a win-win situation. I'm going to go with the mentality that only 10% of the landlords are really as bad as people are saying, and only 10% of the tenants are as bad as people are reporting. But I think that we have to find a middle ground, and I think that the middle ground, if it could be a win-win situation, I think the tenants should be taken out of the equation. And I think that, and this is why I say that we should have a 0% increase, because the people, the way I think this could really advance is if landlords that have rent stabilized apartments in their in their program in their in their um, portfolios, they should be rewarded if they have maintained rent stabilized apartments up to par and they're in line with the leases. Mm -hmm. And the way that this could be done is by bringing in the regulators and maybe rewarding them with better interest rates, lower inter mortgage rates, so when they make and and petitions to you guys. So please consider a win-win situation and help us all in so that we can move forward. Thank, Thank you. you. And Betty Jones to be followed by A. Solonki. Betty Jones. And A. Solonki to be followed by Patricia Bulls Simmons. A. Solonki. Patricia Bulls Simmons. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Um, this is frightening. I am 59 years old. 
I do live in a rent stabilized, and my son lived there also. And it has gotten to the fact that we cannot be separated because we cannot afford the rent alone. We need each other help, and it should not be that way. From all I can hear tonight, such a big crime has been being committed by these landlords. We are right now under a new management, which is Shunda Management that is getting money from HPD to do a big renovation in our building, and they said that our rent will go up. The problem is, if there, are, if there are repairs that needed to be done, it should have been done without our rent going up that much. If you know about Schindler's management, you should know that they are the leading management that, doesn't, that do not do repairs, they only rent to their family, and they take the tenants' money. And it shouldn't be like this. I am so tired and so angry that these laws, we, tenants has been fighting this before I was born, right for tenants to have the right place to live. You shouldn't have to be poor, whereas you have so many rats and roaches. And for you to live comfortably, your rent has to be high. That should be for everybody who is a human being, regardless of how much money you make. I just don't understand that we have come so far in a society where people don't care about people. Who are we? What are we? You cannot go home at night and think, because I live here, Oh, this is comfortable Why people outside in the street are being homeless. I see people my age uh, that are homeless where I live at. So now I live in a prime real estate area on Lenox in 115th. And they're trying to take that away from me? No. Thank you. Please make the right decision. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, I reached the end of my list. I'm going to quickly run through the names of, of people who didn't respond. Alvin, Alexis, Alice, uh, Budia, Munez, Thomasina, Holloway, Diane Shapiro, Jose Talvarez, Dawn Jones, Geronimo Jordan, Rafael Schweizer, Delcinia Glover, Terry Brooks, Barbara Washington, Karen Braga, A. Solanke, Betty Jones. We've reached the end of it. Um, you all get bonus points for staying to the very end. Um, and do I hear a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. <laughs> and do I hear a second? Second. Um, I can't hear a motion. <laughs> we, we are adjourned. Uh, get home safe and have a good night. Thank you.